you now you now can let your you can let your credit go and there's tricks to let your credit go and letting you report it and then turn around and pay it and they take any loans out. So uh, so a, a way of get a way to establish credit immediately, ask somebody that they'd be willing to add you as an authorized user on their account. You're not active. they're not giving you access to their credit card, they're not giving you access to their credit, they're giving you access to their credit score. So if you don't you, you won't be using their credit at all, that's something you can present to them and let them know like, hey, I'm just I just need the credit for six months to a year to help establish credit and help you build credit while you fix the rest of your credit. So prioritize your payments. Figure out again, figure out a budget. Prioritize your payments. Figure out if you want to pay the highest balance or pay the lowest balance. Or you want to pay the ones with the highest interest rates or the ones with the lowest balance. How much interest you will pay over that time? You might want to add that up, but sometimes it's better to just pay off the highest rate and pay off the lowest rate because sometimes it has the highest interest rate. Use this information to help you prioritize your repayment. Use your money, use power, use power payments that you pay off your debt. Use that money towards the next payment. So once you finish paying off one credit card and one bill, take that money now and invest it into the next stage of your credit. Again, credit is an investment. If you don't have credit, you are losing. If you don't have some type of credit established, you're, you're losing this game. So have a purpose for a budget. Start so set a budget. Sit down with you and your kids and set a budget. For the next 30 days, I challenge everyone in this room to take their every receipt that they receive from the store. I don't care what it's for, whether it be some stuff for your kids, whether it be some soda, eat for your receipt for 30 days. At the end of that 30 days, you add it all up and you can figure out where all your money is going to. Nine times out of 10, it's going to lots of convenience stores and it's going to a restaurant. Oftentimes, we care to spend our clothes, our money, that our money on stuff, crippling stuff, and we lose sight of what we can actually be using for. So have a purpose for your budget. Don't just don't just make one. So now we got financial literacy, and we got financial illiteracy. You can choose to be either, or you you can choose you can choose to be one or the other. That's up to you. So the wealth gap. So why? Why, why is it so bad? Why is the wealth gap so bad in minorities in the community? That's because they do that on purpose. They keep their foot on our neck because they know we're not going to take the necessary steps or we're not going to take the, we, we don't know the certain things that we should know to leverage our own situation. So they leverage us themselves. So why are we at the bottom of every at wealth category? Mainly it's because we don't own anything. You look at Madison, you look at Wisconsin, statistically we don't have, we have less than 30% of minority owned businesses in this town. So we've developments. None of, if you look around all the time, none of these developments are owned by black folks. We we have one black real estate developer in all of Dane County. So you guys can understand that why we're all sitting in this room having this conversation right now is because we don't own any of these buildings, so we can't control how hard people live. But that doesn't mean we can't do that. Now, generational wealth is not being passed down. What that means is we care more about what our kids look like than what our kids are gonna be in the future. We care about we care more about what a person thinks of how our kids look than what our what our leveraging our kids' future. You know you can start a business with your kids and you can you can pay taxes on your kids and make them pay for them to have pay for their own expenses. Just a quick thought of throwing it out there. Instead of buying Jordan, start a business, put some put that money into the stock on Jordan instead of buying Jordan. So plan put plans in place for you and your family. Have a rainy day. If you got some plans in place, I promise you later it'll come in here. So working together. We gotta to learn to work together in our community. We take so much time trying to hit on each other that we haven't learned yet to work together in our community to work together. The only way we gonna stop this fight is if we learn to work together and learn to stop hating on each other and stop hating on what the next man got in his pocket. So find an investment group. A way to do that. Get you, talk to your family. It's very simple to start an investment group. You can start one with you and your kids. I got YouTube videos that I can that you can you can look up. I got apps on your phone that you can sign up and set up with your debit account to where you can have you can invest in stock with in penny stocks for the low. I mean not me for the low, and I show y'all after. So different networking events. Attend different networking events. Get to know. Change your environment. If you change your environment, I promise you the Lord will put different energies into your life. We stay around broke people, and we wonder why the energy keeps coming on against us. You surround yourself around people with money, I promise you that energy will drop off into you and it will invigorate you to go do it yourself. So, and stop thinking, mind it, stop thinking it's an overnight plan. We got our phone, we locked in now. We think we're going to get rich like tomorrow. We think we're going to be the next Jeff Bezos or we're going to be the next you know, Facebook dude. 
But it's really, in reality, it's not like that. This shit takes time, it takes years, it takes generations. <coughs> Think about your kids and what you want to get to them, and, and then put a plan in place. So, working at home. So, working at home with your kids. So, have a family budget plan. Let your kids see what you're doing. Stop hiding everything from your kids. Let them see you paying bills. Let them see you crying. Let them see you going through stuff. Because it conditions it, it conditions them and it teaches them that they have to do this and they have to grow. Often we wait till our kids turn 18 and we kick them out the house. They ain't with no credit. We kick them out with no money, no income, no nothing. And we, we start them out behind the eight ball of other people that did little simple things since they were 10 years old. So pay the kids. Set goals together. Your kids have your goals, have your kids have more goals, whether it be little chores or whatever. Have to set it, pay, pay the bills together again. I promise you this stuff works. My kids do it. They see me every month sit at that table and they see me writing my bill, my budget plan down. And now they know how to do that. I don't have to teach them because they done seen it for over years and I've conditioned them to do what I want them to do. Have a savings plan. Make this a fun game for your kids. Sometimes kids can sometimes kids be better budgeters than we are. We just don't give them a chance to. They know how to save money better than we do. I promise you that. So have a budget plan with your kids and get, challenge them to save money. Challenge them to do different things. Challenge them to have businesses. Now, one of the things I do, and I recommend y'all do, stop taking your kids into convenience stores. Facts. You spend so much more money taking your kids in convenience store than you do anything. I condition my kids now, they know, don't you even look at that goddamn stone, because you ain't getting nothing about this bad boy. I ain't paying no dollar. That dollar turned into five dollars before you know it. You count you count that on my 30 day time. I promise you, make your kids stay in the store. I promise you you'll save a whole lot of money just on that. So Share this, share the game knowledge with your family. So if it's some stuff that you feel as though you know, or you some shit that you're hearing this, come on in here, come on in here, come on, come on. I saw you know, come on, come on. All right, okay, you still okay? <laughs> so quick, easy debate. So here's us uh, actions and solutions. Then now you guys want to write some of this stuff down. So some of this stuff can be important for you coming up. Now again, they have government programs for minorities. I'll repeat that. They have government programs for minorities for us to utilize and us to get. Just like we can get Social Security, we can get public aid, we can also leverage home ownership, we can also leverage credit, we can also leverage stock. So, here are a few programs that they have that you can or utilize. FHA loan, Section 8, Urban League. There's a company called Moving Out. For anybody that has anyone in the household that's, that has a disability, there's a program called Moving Out that can help you with getting home ownership. With, I'm, I'm sorry. You raise your hand. Okay, so Operation Fresh Start. Freddie Mae, Freddie Mac. They also got a program called NACA. Write that down. N-A-C-A. NACA.com. This is a secret. I only give to clients that I work with. So I'm giving this free hit to you. This is a great way to get the new pro government program. They don't go by the same FHA guidelines. Again, that's NACA.com. I'm giving y'all a free hit. I charge $2,000 a hand to, to get this information out. Now, leverage. Different ways of leveraging stuff. You got IRA accounts. You got no money down. You got owner finance. Did you know that some of these owners just don't even want to be in the house no more, and they will let you move in? They have different things called wholesaling and different ways that you can actually leverage and say, hey, why don't you be the bank instead of me going to the bank while I get my credit together? People actually do it. I promise you somebody in your neighborhood, somebody in this hood is old enough. I know, somebody right now in that I might have somebody for you too. Send me every day. Auctions. Check out auctions. Yes, sir. Here you come in here. <laughs> about the no money down there. Yeah, you can actually, it's called wholesaling. You can actually, people will actually give you their house. Example, a person could be 70, 80 years old, their kids don't moved out, their kids don't want to be there no more, and they just don't want to live there anymore. They can't take the upkeep. So instead of them just selling it, they'll let you buy it while you fix your credit up. And they become, they be, ultimately, they become the bank. Okay, it's called owner finance. Owner finance. So here's some other things. They got foreclosures that you can get a hold of. They got fees that you can pay. Insurance, life. You can you, you can leverage your insurance at your job for tax-free wealth investments to put toward a down payment. They got taxes that you can use. Every year y'all get taxes every year on your kids. That's your 3.5% down for your down payment for your house. 
or they show money down to pay off your credit or to build your credit. Because again, credit is what? Leverage. <laughs> Okay, here's some other programs that they have that they don't tell us about. So they got the acre program up here. It teaches about the acre program is a it's a commercial wealth building program they teach about to black folks. Made just for black folks. They got the weed loan. They got tip dollars. They got CDBG grants. They got opportunity zones. They got four community investments. They got investors, friends and family. Please believe. Just for a second. Trust accounts. So let me give you a story about friends and family. So my, so I tell you, my first investment came shortly after I got out of prison, right? So again, I'm tired of playing the game. I, was, I say I wasn't going back to prison, so my drive became is to make sure I do everything I can not to go back to prison. So I'm talking to my ex at the time, and I'm talking to her, and I'm like, gee, I need you to talk to your parents, because their parents are white, and they were young. So I'm talking to her like, man, y'all need to, you need to holler at your parents and get a down payment for a house. As I was talking to her, the girl that was doing her hair, was a little short little Mexican, just literally looked up and was like, I got some money. So me being me, I looked at it immediately and was like, stop lying. Don't play with my emotions. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't play like that. I'm playing my money. Come to find out, y'all ever, if you ever heard of the little structure settlement that I have, no structure settlement, them, them mm -hmm. little commercial yeah. come to find out, she was one of them people. <laughs> so I'm like, stop playing. <laughs> so two days later, I got $25,000 in the bank for my first investment. God puts the people in, again, God puts those energies in your place right you want to or not. So with that, I tell you to write this down. Power 100. Now, the reason I said that is called the power 100. <laughs> the power 100. You know somebody in your family, your situation, somebody that will either leverage you, put you on that, authorize you on their account, or they will give you a down payment. Yes, sir. What do you need to have to, to get in this, on that, on that, uh, Friends and family or that house on home. Nah, it's about actually like people you know. Friends and friends family. Friends and family. Really? So when I say the power of 100, I mean your friends and your family. Your family. You know somebody in your network. Don't, don't black folks tend that we don't think so. And I didn't too. Until I got that money, I didn't think I knew nobody. Because I didn't went and ask my family, my aunties, my friends, everybody. I didn't went to dice games and ask people. Not that, you know what I'm saying? I didn't, get, I didn't care who you was. I'm going to ask you for some money and ask you to invest in my business. My whole family pretty much laughed at me, but I had one person that said yes, and my life's been different ever since. So that's why I mean, the Power 100 is one of the most important things I can tell you about it for today. I know y'all don't believe me right now, but I promise you, you got a rich uncle or a rich auntie that got some cash or some credit. I, I, I promise you, I really do. Now, you know, really <laughs> have you must have as an investor. Write these down. Stop lying. Write these down. Write these down. Write these down. Stockpile. Coinbase. TD Ameritrade, stock, uh, stock wits. I use some of these, I'm gonna tell you, I use a few of these myself, and I'll show you on my phone as you, after we done, so y'all can see that I don't play about this money. When it comes to money and leverage, I try to find any little thing I can do to leverage my situation. Market watch, personal capital, seek free, seek big, S-I-G, F-I-G. Learn, Yahoo Finance, some of these are apps, some of these are news, or some of these are apps, some of these are financial web articles that you can use, like Yahoo Finance. It teaches you about the basis of stock building. Investing.com, Acorn, my personal favorite. Acorn, who said that? Me. I'm going to tell you about that in a second. M1 Finance, Snowball Money, Robin Hood. There's a couple more on here I didn't put on here. Uh, so, uh, what's the one I'm missing? Uh, so they got another one. It's called, uh, I don't know if you guys ever heard of it. Uh, Jay Morrison. Yes, can you guys please sign this and put your phone number and email down so I can see you updates and emails. Uh, I, I'm sorry, baby girl. I'm just trying to make sure I can be myself. Did you put your name on that paper? All right, don't worry about that. You good. I wasn't talking to you. See, I was talking to this. You good. Yeah. Well, I would appreciate it like you should. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to leave this up here a minute so you guys can go all right with it. <laughs> These are slides, so I can pass this around to anybody that needs it. And y'all can, you, can always call me. I'll give you my card out here. Some, some literature. You guys are always welcome to call me. I'm all, I work with minorities. Positive note. Hey, y'all listening? 
Yeah, we do. Because everyone in this room is either a minority or they're low income, no. you do qualify for low payment for my consulting services. I repeat, you qualify for discount on my consulting services. What that means is I won't charge you as much as I charge everybody else. I will also work a payment plan with you. So all you have to do is figure out how much you can afford every month and how much it is and how important it is to you to invest in your future. That's the deal I made for my clients. You guys are welcome to that deal. It's up to you to decide if you choose. Now, let me tell you how I feel these stuff. These are investments. I do use T.A. Ameritrade. I do use Edward Jones. I do use Acorn. I do use Stockpile. These are apps that I, I use some. I do use Robinhood every now and then. I got cryptocurrency. These white folks, these rich people, I ain't going to say white folks because white folks do it. These rich people, they got secrets that they hide in plain sight. So all we got to do is just do our research. Your cell phone, that, that little device you got in your hand, is the most powerful piece they ever put in a black folk's hand in our life. They literally leveled out the playing score when they gave us the damn internet. So we now don't have an excuse for why we don't know how to read. We now don't have an excuse for why we don't know how to invest because they put it right on YouTube. We can listen to a millionaire investor just as easy as we can listen to uh, a desperate housewife. I'm sorry. So this is the most important takeaway that everybody needs to remember. What? I said it before. He who has a goal makes what? Makes the rule. Credit is leverage. So again, I want to say thank you guys for taking this time out with me. My name is Martin Lackey. Here's my contact information if anybody needs to get in contact with me. Martin.Lackey, I'll give you my cards out. I'll have my cards and everything I'll pass out. So everybody can get with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.